and welcome everybody to Fizz Buzz Solution. And this is a common interview question that uh, you know, beginning programmers or beginning job seeking for programmers uh, get this one a lot for some reason. It seems kind of simple on the surface, but has a few gotchas you have to be careful of. So before I get started, I want to give a quick shout out to my channel members. Kevin and Paul are still leading the pack, and uh, in this video we welcome Super Solvers. Thanks so much. For to them and everybody here for supporting the channel much appreciated so let's get it started with our challenge here today fizzbuzz fizzbuzz is basically a I guess a child's game i've never really heard of it but uh, apparently i guess people play it and what the concept is is that you are counting from one to 100 and if the number is divisible or evenly divisible by three, instead of saying three, you say fizz. Okay, so that'd be three, six, nine, you know, 12, and let's see, we'll leave 15 out of there. If it's divisible by five, you say buzz. But if it's divisible by both, like 15, you say fizz buzz. You can do the same thing all the way up to 100, and we'll, we'll include 100 in this particular example. So it'd be one, two, fizz, four, buzz, fizz, seven, eight, fizz, buzz, 11, fizz, 13, 14, fizz, buzz, etc., etc., up to 100. So let's go ahead and think about that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do four I in range. Again, if you're you know, at the point where you're looking to do a job interview, this should be pretty straightforward. We're starting at one. We want to end at 100, but we want it to be inclusive. So we need to do 101 here. And I could test it. I could say print i just to make sure it does start at zero and end at 100, or does start at one and end at 100. But again, if you're at the point where you're interviewing, hopefully you got this part down. So we got to think about this. We've, we've got basically four conditions. Uh, we've got fizz buzz. We've got fizz, and we've got buzz. And then, of course, we have you know none of the above. Okay. So fizz buzz requires divisible, divisibility by three and divisibility by five. So I'm going to go ahead and code that. So if I percent three equals zero and I percent five equals zero. Print fizz. Oops, need some quotation marks there. Fizz buzz. That's one condition. L if, and we'll do fizz, which is divisible by three. And I, I'm doing this one first just because it's the most common. Actually, I should probably reverse these because you know the five is less common than. Uh, the three, so I percent three equals zero as a short circuit evaluation. And if you don't know that is, look it up, um, <laughs> I guess. So I percent three, um, let's see, equals, uh, again, equals zero. We're going to print uh, fizz. And then we're gonna do our buzz, so L if, I percent five equals zero, print buzz. Now, if it's none of these, we would do else print uh, fizz, uh, print, print the number, so in this case. And let's go ahead and test it and see if it's working. Okay, so, now again, I haven't memorized all the numbers, but let's see, one, two, fizz, because that's divisible by three. Buzz is divisible by five. Six is divisible by three. Nine's divisible by three, buzz is divisible by five, um, 11, and then we got fizz, and then we do have a fizz buzz. So we should see fizz buzz like 15, um, 30, um, 45, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, and if I go all the way to the end, just kind of just kind of test the last few here, I got a buzz for 100, which is good. I got a fizz for 99. Um, and you can see how basically it is working as expected. Now, again, I, I did a little bit of an optimization here right away is I checked for divisibility by five first, just because it's rare. Um, because what happens, and this is what I, I said earlier about short circuit evaluation, because I have an and here, if this is false, it doesn't matter if this is true or false. There's no point in checking it. And the computer uh, will not check 
that statement. It'll just check this. If it's false, it knows better than to go ahead and check this because it would be a waste of time. Um, so then we go and we do check for three. And again, I chose three because actually three is more common. And since three is more common, um, I basically wanted to, because then, it, then it doesn't check for five because five is rare. Um, so hopefully that kind of makes a little bit of sense and why I chose to do it that way. Now, just out of curiosity, um, if we counted how many comparisons we had to do for each of these. So in this case, we have to do two comparisons. Actually, I guess you could argue it's, uh, you know, 1.5 because, you know, part of the time it's a five, it's, this is done and this isn't. So let's just go ahead and count this as one if statement. How many if comparisons we'll do? We'll just ignore the fact that's an and. Now if we do fizz, count is going to be plus equal two because we had to do this and this. And if we get the buzz, we've had two failed accounts, two failed, and we end up with three all together. And then else is just what's left over, so that's not really a comparison. So let's print the count of this particular approach. Now this isn't, you know, maybe the best way of calculating it, but it'll give us a rough idea of, you know, how many uh, comparisons it took us to get this. You can see here the answer, oh, uh, the answer is 102. Okay, so we have a certain number of these, we have a certain number of these, and we have a certain number of these. And then of course this is the default, we're not counting the else. Um, because the comparison has already been done. So just out of curiosity, it's 102, you know, comparisons to get to this. And again, I'm ignoring the fact that this is really two, but sometimes it's only one, sometimes it's two. So we could put it 1.5, but you get the idea. Um, but I don't think it's gonna be a huge change there. So just kind of remember that number. Now, there's another, I mean, there's plenty of different ways to do this. So I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this and try to come up with a different way of doing it. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use an auxiliary kind of variable here to help. So I'm gonna call it found and that's gonna be false. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna say if I percent three equals zero, then I'm going to go ahead and print fizz, no space, end equals single quotes. I think I can use double quotes there too. And this is Python 3. And what this does, this is like print in Java versus print line. So what this does is it prints across and it doesn't go to the next line. Because what I want to do here is if I percent 3 equals, or I percent 5 equals 0. I'm going to print buzz and end equals quote quote. So now notice I still have to do this. Okay, so for every three, I'm still doing this one. Now if it's not a if it's not a fizz and not a buzz, okay, I'm gonna do if not found. I know I didn't add that yet print i and then print I'm gonna say print i mm, comma uh, print i else print just put a space and what I gotta do here is also have to put uh, I have to put uh, found equals true so this is a little bit more complicated um, but I think it's gonna be fewer comparisons I'm not sure let's find out um, so found equals true. Now I can also at this point just do, actually, I don't need to do end here. I could do print. Well, I'll leave it like this. I'll, I'll say found equals true. And then we'll kind of go ahead and kind of play with the numbers a little bit and see what happens. Um, again, this is, it's a seemingly simple problem, but, uh, yeah, it's kind of, kind of interesting. So let's go ahead and run this and see if we get the correct results. And I think it, I think we did, yeah. So it look, it looks very similar. So we got one, yeah. So fizz, we got buzz, fizz, fizz, buzz, fizz, and fizz, buzz. Okay. So let's go ahead and do a quick count here. So count 
plus equals one. And if I got to this one, I've done two. So count plus equals two. And then here I got count plus equals three. So that's the only way it would get there. I think this is gonna be a lot more in the counts. Yeah, so that's 232 uh, different comparisons. So that's kind of interesting. Now I can cut this one down a little bit by doing the following. Um, I can do, let's see, actually I should, have, I should have added count plus equals three here because I didn't count this. Because um, even if it's not found, I'm still doing uh, a count. So that's kind of interesting. Uh, actually, no, this should be plus equals one. I guess they should all be plus equals one because I'm still counting these. In the other example, I wasn't. So let's try that again. So that's 120. So that's just a little bit more uh, than the other one. Oh, we got a little bit of a, an error here. Okay, because I forgot to put found equals true. So this is kind of an interesting problem. Oh, that was 106. So it's only four more uh, comparisons than the original method that I did. But I think the, but again, I didn't really account for the fact that uh, in that first comparison, there were actually two comparisons. So I think this is probably a slightly more efficient uh, method. Now, the other thing I can do here, I realized is I could get rid of this and I could just print buzz and then continue. Because if, if I find a buzz, I've maybe found a fizz, maybe haven't, but I don't need to do not found. And then because I don't need to worry about this because I'm using print here. So let's see what result is we get here. Well, still 106, okay. So that didn't really help as much. Um, I really thought it would, would help a bit, but uh, I guess I was wrong on that one. Um, probably because I wasn't counting in here. So count plus equals one. I still have to, I guess I still have to count this one. So maybe I did that wrong. So this is 133 and let's do found equals true. Let's go ahead, 153. So actually, okay, so this is 153. Uh, if I change this to continue, it avoids a few down here. Uh, a few comparisons, like it was 133. But the original method that I did actually gave us fewer uh, comparisons because of the use of if, elif, etc. But again, I'm not sure if I correctly, you know, kind of accounted for the fact that uh, there was an and here. So um, yeah, it's kind of interesting. Um, so those are a couple different ways to, um, you know, to to solve this particular problem. Um, this one looks a bit more complex, um, but and it also relies on the fact that you know you can print without doing a line return, and uh, so yeah, so that's kind of interesting. Um, it's, it's 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 really a, a fascinating problem. I should probably try this again and do it like with with a proper timer and maybe just do it up to a million and see which is fastest, uh, which would be kind of an interesting exercise. But maybe I'll save that for you, the viewer. So anyway, that is. Fizz buzz, that's two ways of solving it. Again, this is a common interview question, or so I hear, because uh, I haven't actually done this type of interview myself, but it's pretty straightforward. Um, so this is something, if you're gonna be going for a programming job, you probably wanna know how to do this in whatever language it is that you are you know, focusing on. So anyway, uh, good luck. Thanks to everyone for watching, and uh, you know, keep on coding. Take care.